Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. Hello! I think I've already done that, haven't I? What did you think of that one then? Pretty spectacular stuff. Not a permanent change, a temporary new intro, one I have been saving for a very special occasion. And this is that special occasion because Adrian, the man who designed the intro for me, also designed the watch on my wrist today, the MW Timepieces Legato Diver. Not only that, but Adrian has the biggest watch review channel in Indonesia. A very impressive feat considering that Indonesia has a population of 273 and a half million, no less. Plus, he owns a bricks and mortar and online micro brand watch store in Indonesia. So with all of that knowledge and experience, hands-on knowledge of watches, you would expect his debut model to be a good one, wouldn't you? And you'd be right, this thing is a cracker. When I think of micro brands that have really nailed their debut model over the last few years, I think of Namica, I think of Studio Underdog, and I think of RZE, and I think that Adrian can now be added to that list. These are launching on Kickstarter next week, priced under 500 US dollars, which I think is perfectly reasonable considering what you're getting here. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. You can sign up for more information and for early bird alerts there. And I think all of Adrian's knowledge and experience is evident from end to end here, really, from the warranty card to the fantastic packaging, well beyond anything you'd normally normally see on a $500 watch, the build quality of the watch itself, even the colour chosen for the stitching for the leather strap that comes as part of the package. I think you're going to be really impressed. If you like guitars, that is. Yes, this is a guitar-themed dive watch. Adrian is a musician and a watch lover. Massive metal and punk scene in Indonesia, by the way, if you weren't already aware. And he wanted to combine his two loves, guitars and watches, in one object. And that's what he's done. Now, it's not a novelty item by any stretch, but there are some specific design cues he's taken from guitars and incorporated them into the bezel insert and the case back. So you're gonna have to be all right. You're gonna have to be on board with that if you're fancying one of these. Now you saw the pop-up, I'm sure. This video is sponsored by Adrian. Don't just take my word for it though. There are literally a dozen other YouTube watch reviews of this one already for you to check. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. Right, launching on the 5th of April on Kickstarter for 489 US dollars, early bird special. Let's see what your nearly 500 bucks buys you and let's see where Adrian's experience has gone into this watch, those nice little touches. I do like the logo, MW Masterwork Studios, that's his own design studio, and I like the packaging proper wooden box, a rarity at this price, but it just gets better once you open the box. Not only do we have a nice little metal warranty card, you get a full two year warranty with that, which is good. You also get a little legato diver brief here. All of the touches that Adrian has put into this one. Check out mwtimepieces.com as well. There's some nice sketches, the design sketches behind this watch as well, combining his two passions. Nice branded polishing cloth here and yeah, that's not so bad either, is it? Screwdriver for the bracelet, lovely bracelet, and a color match leather strap to go with the watch. Now I have a couple of different color variants in for review. I think there's six colors altogether. Well, two if you count this red and white one twice. There is an Indonesian special edition limited to 50 pieces, which is a reference to the Indonesian flag, which is red and white. If you're not in Indonesia, but want one of these, it'll just say 300 meters water resistance rather than having any Indonesian text on the dial. I'll kind of flip back and forth between the two. I'll also show you them on the bracelets and on the leather straps. But let's talk guitars first before I get into the dimensions and specs because you're probably gonna to have to be on board with a whole guitar theme if you're keen on one of these. Well, sapphire bezel insert featuring a kind of fretboard strings on there. That is the first obvious one. And then there's the case back. Oh, well, you have the six strings right across the middle and you have this kind of filigree etching around the outer edges. I'm guessing that is a reference to the etching that you get on certain metal plates on acoustic guitars, but as you've probably already worked out, 
I'm not a big guitar guy myself, so I can't say with any more confidence than I did. And Legato Diver. Legato is a particular technique. They say Eddie Van Halen is famous for it, hence his appearance on the thumbnail today. Still here? Good, because I think you're in for a bit of a treat if you are on board with the guitar thing. 39.5mm in diameter, 12.4mm thick, so great dimensions, super compact, 45.8mm lug to lug with drilled lugs as well. Quick release bracelet, quick release leather strap, so you can go back and forth between the two again. Very nice. I have seen this done before, but I've seen it done where one or t'other was not quick release. 20mm lug width. Now, there's a male end link here bringing that lug to lug out a little bit more, but it still wears great. Down to 16, back up to 18.5 at the clasp. Sized up for me, average size, 7 inch wrist, 151 grams. Bang on that stainless steel sports watch sweet spot. And the case finish is very, very nice indeed. Lovely high polish chamfer running all the way along from the very tip of the lug to the very tip of the lug. Nice crown as well, knurled, deep etched with the Masterworks MW timepieces logo. And that is loomed as well. Again, a nice little touch. Crack and bezel finish also, and a very fine level of brushing throughout the rest of the case. Screw down crown, 300 meters of water resistance, so 12 and a half mil thick, but they still manage 300 meters of water resistance. I already talked about the sapphire bezel insert, flat sapphire crystal with 10 layers of anti-reflective undercoating. Bezel action is great. Sounds good. Yeah, feels really good as well. Everything lines up and no back play or bounce whatsoever. 120 click, just like you'd expect. It's a really nice bracelet as well. This one is obviously off the second watch. Super articulation here. Look at that, you can fold those links on top of each other. That does mean to say there's a little bit of flex, extra flex, but that means it's very comfortable on wrist as well. And as discussed, quick release with those male end links. And it's my favorite style of clasp. Double security, fold over, double pushers, milled upper, milled lower, and six holes of micro adjust. I will come back to the clasp a bit later on with one specific moan though. But again, the brush finish is nice here, and it has that MW logo etched into the fold over. High polish chamfered edge. All right, let's get these two outside and have a look at them side by side under macro lens in natural light. And you can see differences in the dial. The one on the left, the blue one, obviously has a quite a strong pronounced sunburst effect. The one on the right, the white dial does not but it does have full loom, as I'll show you in a couple of minutes. Differences with the hand colors as well. Similar indices, applied circles, double circles all the way around, applied triangle at 12. They're not particularly tall indexes, though I'll show you this at an oblique angle in a couple of minutes, and you'll see what I mean. MW logo printed beneath the triangle, and legato diver above the date complication at the six o'clock, nicely integrated date complication, and depending on which model you go for, it'll either say three 300 meters, 660 feet, or Meraputi, please forgive my lack of Indonesian, which is the name of the Indonesian flag, hence the white and red reference. Print a minute track around the outer edge, and that is it with a dial. Handset are syringe style, and again, you can see differences between the two models. Brushed silver on the blue one, and black to contrast against that white dial, which I think is a good move on the red and white one. Lollipop second hand with large counterbalance, and a little bit of extra color, red tip on both models. And one further nice touch is designed in Indonesia, and the date complication itself. Beveled edges, it's not rectangular either, helping it integrate with the circular dial better. It is properly color matched, not just black or white. You can see the teal one there actually has a teal date wheel, and the Arabics on it are loomed. And there is just a stack of loom on both of these watches. Now, at the moment, on initial impressions, when you turn the lights off, the loom dial one, clearly on the left, is clearly the brighter of the two. But as you'll see, they both end up equal after 20 minutes. And the sapphire bezel insert is always a very pleasant effect when loomed. The whole thing really does glow vibrantly on your wrist. And don't forget about the loom crown as well for good measure. If we speed these up, I know they're only prototypes, but yeah, it's still pretty good even towards the end of the 20 minutes. But most of the loom on the dial of the loom dial one has faded, and it's about neck and neck by the time we come to the finish line. The only other thing I haven't told you about yet is the movement. It's a Swiss made Salita SW200-1, 26 dual hacking and hand winding auto with a roughly 40 hour power reserve. Slim movements, that's why they managed to squeeze this one under 12 and a half mil thick. 
even though it's got 300 meters of water resistance. You can just about see the undecorated Salita through that guitar string case back. You could also see some of that filigree patterning in more detail around the outer edges. Let's get it on wrist. It's got a great set of dimensions, this one. You'd expect it to wear well, and indeed it does wear well. If a little bit top heavy, it's not a particularly thick watch, but I think a lot of the weight from this one is from the head of the watch. Very, very comfortable bracelet. Lovely brushing on the upper and lower surfaces of this one, and so much articulation. Six holes of micro adjust, you're gonna get a good fit with it. Now, male end links do extend that 46 lug to lug out to just over 50, but because they point down straight away, yeah, it fits me no problems at all. That's the same teal one on the leather. Yeah, they've even color matched the teal on the dial to the teal on that stitching. Another nice little touch there. MW logo on a decent piece of hardware on these and they're good quality leather straps. If a little bit slippery, I'll come back to that in a second as well. Overhead legibility on both models is pretty good. I think better on this one, the black hands really do stand out against the white dial, even if they're not particularly big hands. Again, I'll circle back to that in a second. Outside natural light, it's always a pleasant effect when a flat sapphire crystal is combined with a flat sapphire bezel insert. The two things kind of merge into one, giving you this nice big reflective surface. You can also see quite clearly the high polish chamfer running from lug to lug, the only high polish surface on the head of the watch, but again, it's a nice effect in the light. And on wrist again, you can see what that double sapphire does when I roll it back and forth in the sunshine. Now, because the lugs are drilled at the very tips, you do get quite a gap when you're wearing it on the leather strap. The leather strap does sit quite low, therefore, relative to the overall 12 and a half mil height of the watch. But obviously you're not obliged to wear it on the leather strap at all if you don't want to. And the bracelet is really a very, very good one, I have to say. And the pocket shots of the two watches to finish, 39 and a half, just slightly smaller than 40, smaller than average therefore, but you barely notice the difference. You can effectively consider this one to be a 40. Once again, you can see that double sapphire just catching the light occasionally when I roll my wrist. So lots to like with this one, I think. Lots of nice little touches really from end to end as mentioned, but I do, as always, have a couple of moans and niggles. The hands, I think, could have been just a bit beefier. They're a little bit skinny. I don't think they look undersized relative to the rest of the dial because those circular indexes are quite small as well, but maybe just a tiny little bit broader rather than longer, just a bit broader would have given them a bit more impact and a bit more legibility as well when in use. And the bracelet is a good one, but I think there's one detail of the clasp that needs attention before these get sent out to customers and it is that fold over sits just high on both of them and there's a little bit too much wobble there. It can catch on things, yet it can pop unnecessarily. That needs attention. It was a problem I remember for Dorenzo with their DRZ-03s a couple of years ago. They ended up shipping a different clasp altogether, so I do hope that Adrian gets to the bottom of that problem before they end up in customers' hands. And I mentioned again that the spring bar location is very, very low, meaning you get a not all that attractive side shot of most of the case when you're using the leather strap. In addition, the leather strap is quite shiny underneath. The top surface and bottom surface are virtually indistinguishable, so it doesn't grip on your arm as it might if it was a suede backing or something similar. And when combined with a chunky, fairly weighty case, that means it's gonna slip and slide around on your wrist. It's gonna bobble more than it would if A, the spring bar hole location was slightly higher up, and or B, that had a different backing. There was a little bit more tactility and grip from the strap itself. Oh, and uh, yeah, guitars. The guitar thing rather goes over my head personally. I would be more into this one if it was a conventional diver with a conventional bezel and without those stripes, sorry, strings on the case back. So like I said, at the very beginning of the review, you're gonna have to be on board with the guitar theme if you wanna get the most out of this one. But if you're into guitars yourself or you're okay with the theme, then yeah, there's a lot to like here and not a lot to dislike. So many nice touches, the color match, loom filled date wheel, the loom crown, the lovely case finishing, the sapphire bezel insert, Swiss movement, decent quality leather strap as part of the deal today. Less than $500, I think that is perfectly reasonable in 2022. So there you have it, very, very impressive for a debut model. You can tell this man has been working in the industry for many years in one way or another. A couple of tweaks needed though before production units hit market. 
And if you're not into the whole guitar thing, maybe he'll do a non-guitar version of this one with a different name in due course. If you want to see another micro or two that have nailed their debut model like I was talking about earlier on, why not check out the Studio Underdog, there's only one Studio Underdog, and the very impressive Titanium RZE. Thanks for watching, see you soon.